Hello again and welcome back to another classic resin commentary. Today we're looking at Kenta Kibashi and Akira Tawe. This is their second AJPW Triple Crown Championship encounter. The first one, um, YouTube removed because of copyright and I'm still pissed off. Uh, again, I still don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to, <laughs> how to challenge that, if I should challenge that, all that stuff. But in that match, Kenta Kibashi emerged victorious and he won the Triple Crown title from... Akira Tawe. Um, as we know that Kenta Kibashi is champion again at this point. And there is Akira Tawe, former sumo wrestler. And there is the Triple Crown champion Kenta Kibashi. As the Grand Sword song echoes throughout the arena. There he is, Kenta Kobashi. Tawe definitely has the size advantage here. Much bigger man, former sumo wrestler, as I said before. But Kobashi, you know, he's got that fighting spirit. Size doesn't seem to bother him too much. Even if his opponents are bigger than him, he doesn't seem to care too much about that. And there he is, Kenta Kobashi. We saw him defend the belt against Jun Akiyama in his last match. The in-ring introductions taking place here. Kabashi won his second Triple Crown title after beating Toshiaki Kawada. You see, uh, he lost it to Misawa and won it back from Kawada. So this is his second reign as champion. Looking to defend here against Tawe. Tawe only had one reign so far, and that was the reign that ended when Kabashi beat him. Can he win it back? Does he have what it takes? And there's Kiritawe. The big man. And his opponent. Get ready for this. And there come the streamers. As it's customary, throwing the streamers to your favorite wrestler. And Almost always, Kabashi is showered in streamers. 60 minute time limit, as with most matches here in All Japan. Both men are waiting the bell. And here we go. I was talking about Tawe being the bigger man, but actually when you look at these two next to each other, I think Kobashi might have the size advantage, now that I look at it. <laughs> He's a deceptively big dude, I keep forgetting how big Kenta Kobashi is. Nice tie up here, Kobashi in the orange, Tawe in the red. For the colorblind viewers, it may be a bit hard to tell those two colors apart, but... Nice jump across the chest. This of course is taking place in the Nippon Bordekan. One of the most iconic arenas in all Japan history now. Nice chop across the chest. Big Brute coming in to Kabashi. Kabashi hitting off the ropes going for a nice shoulder tackle. Big Brute to the head. Coming off the ropes. Cracking the neck into a side headlock. Here goes Akira Tawe. Really cranking it, putting the pressure on the head and neck of Kenta Kibashi. Kibashi trying to fire out with these elbows now, going to come off the ropes. Tightening that side headlock. Tawe's got him in trouble. Tawe now in control fully here over Kenta Kibashi, trying to stand up. 
power up off the ropes, maybe. Leaning against them, trying to use them for some support, but it looks like Tawi's in control. A free time to break. Oh, what a big chop across the chest. Chops to the side of the head there from Tawi now. Hitting the ropes once more. Can he shoot him off? No. Hoist him up for a big backdrop suplex. But, oh, Tawi held on. He held on to the side headlock. It kind of looks like a bunch. He's naked with that lighting. He tried to shoot him off the ropes, try and break free. The headlock couldn't get out of it. Then decided to drop him with a backdrop suplex, which was incredible. Um, and then Tawi held on. It is like a pit bull, not letting go. Now into the corner. Shoulder charges here from Kabashi in the corner. Now again, oh, running bulldog from Tawe. So the headlock is finally broken. But it only didn't come in the way that Kabashi would have wanted it to. Went for a choke slam there. Chops back and forth. And now Kobashi with the chops. Definitely a trademark of his. Oh, spinning chop to Tawe. Dropping him hard. My goodness. And Tawe goes down as Kenta Kobashi in control. Standing tall now, approaching Tawe. Going side of the head. Gonna maybe attempt a vertical suplex here, hoisting Tawe straight vertically in the end. Look at this, holding on to him. Incredible strength from Kobashi. Look at this. Dropping him straight down to the canvas. Only a two count. Chin lock here. That way, weighing in at 265 pounds. An impressive physical specimen. Nice chin lock from Kobashi. We get those chops. Chopper, chopper. Now Irish whip here, Kobashi charging forward, going for a oh, diving shoulder tackle, knocking Tarway off of his feet. Into the pin, no, kick out. Kick out from Akira Tawe. Now we have another suplex, can't quite get him here. Struggling to hoist him up. Definitely using his weight to his advantage here as Tawe planting his feet. And look at this, now going to an abdominal stretch here. Abdominal, abdominal stretch. Why is that word so hard for me to say? Abdominal. Why do I want to say abdominable? What's wrong with my brain? Anyway, <laughs> abdominal stretch here. And he's got the leg over the head too. Looking pretty tough here for Tawa. He is bent like a pretzel. That's a big man too. He's bent in half as they stumble into the ropes. Referee breaking up the hold. Kabashi stomping his opponent in the corner. Oh, big shot there from Kobashi. Irish with Oh, he runs with him. Kitchen sink. Or ups again with another running knee. Shades of Val Venus. Now, Russian leg sweep. Shades of the Sandman. <laughs> Kick out. Those are Kabashi's idols, I'm sure. <laughs> Now gonna try and get Tawai back up to his feet here. Oh, going for the power bomb. Some of uh, Kabashi's signature moves here. That power bomb. Seen use it to great effect many times. 
He's trying good knees to the midsection here, chop across the chest. Big slap coming in, countered. Kobashi now back into the attempt for the power bomb. Can he get it? Tawe planting his feet. Oh, look at that! A heel kick. Sort of hooked there as well. It's beautiful. Raindrop kick from Tawe. I'm not quite sure you would call that uh, that kick. Got a hook kick, and here comes a running big boot, sending Kobashi crashing into the steel guard rail on the outside, knocking the bell off the table too, it looked like. No way, the 265 pound look at the fly! Straight through the middle ropes, taking Kobashi down. The six foot four Akira Tawe flying through the ropes. Jesus. You know, Tawe kind of reminds me of Giant Barber in a way, you know, just kind of the way he looks. Um, he's got that... He's got that sort of lanky build that Barber had. He's got the red red trunks too, um, the, the sumo background. And now, elbow drop there from Tawe. Kick out. You gotta do more than that to put this man down. It would seem. Off the ropes. Oh, another big boot from Tawe dropping, Ko uh, dropping Kobashi. I almost said Kawada. Why did I say that? What's wrong with me? And now, now the abdominal stretch is on the other man. Kenta Kobashi's trapped in it this time. And really wrenching it here. You see what they do with this is that head and neck is pushed down. The knee is sort of in the ribcage area. It really stretches the, well, the abdomen, as hence the name. All those muscles that kind of line from your hip right up to the, just under your ribs there. If you can feel the abdomen muscles. It, it hurts. It's not, it's not a pleasant hold to be in, I can tell you that. Chops there, back and forth. Oh, Interesting boot there. And he went for another one, but Kobashi collapsed before he got and just stomps on him, I think. Jesus. Stomping on his opponent there. Kick out. Hiratawe in control here. Oh, nice forearm sending Kobashi into the corner. Raining down elbows there. Or well, one. Into the corner again. Oh, another big boot from Tawe. Drop kick to Kobashi. Oh, Kobashi looks like he's in pain there. He clutches that rib. That may have, may have hurt him pretty bad there. I mean, as, as it would, a running dropkick from a 265 pound man ought to do some damage to the old rib cage. I know ribs are strong and everything, but... Oh, no, no, no. Tawai got him on the apron here. This could be bad. What on earth is he planning to do here? With that apron, which is one of the hardest part of the ring. DDT! Straight down onto it. You don't know how the wrestling rings are set up. The wooden boards are under there, and like that apron is the hard bit, the edges of those boards, and it is, it is brutal. I mean, the middle of the ring is pretty hard too. The whole ring is, but those edges is where it's hardest. It's where the the impact is less absorbed. There's springs in the middle to sort of absorb some sort of impact. Um, gives a bit of cushioning, a bit of bounce, not too much though. But the edges don't have any of that. It's like landing straight on wood. And Kobashi's on the middle rope here. The crowd of the Nippon Buddha kind of going wild as Kobashi rains down punches. I think Tawai's going to try and push him off the top rope here. Potentially to the outside. Oh my god. Oh, he is thrown back into the ropes. And then a spinning chop taking Tawai off the apron. 
ramming him into the corner, but then Kobashi immediately coming back out. That was insane. Now Kobashi. Of the power, a bit, a bit of streamer there, stuck to the thigh of Kiritawe, back body drop. And again, that is padding there on the outside, but it's not very thick. Oh, a big power bomb from Kobashi straight on the outside onto that very thin padding. And concrete underneath it. Honestly, I think the only reason the padding is there is just for show. <laughs> you know? Because um, otherwise, people will be like, oh, this is barbaric. We can't allow this. So they just kind of put that there just so people will shut up a little bit. But it really doesn't do anything. Trust me. It doesn't, doesn't change much at all. Into the pin now. Kick out. Sort of like in the UFC with their their gloves. They don't really do that much or cushion that much. Um, but it's just so people think that it does. People think it's safer. Like banning 12 to 6 elbows. Somewhere Joe Rogan is vibrating with anger. Chopped to the top of the head. Knocking Akira Tawe down. Oh. Ooh. Jesus, forearm to the forehead. Four to the four. Nice kick out there. Now what is he going to do here? Going to try and pull Ty back up to his feet. Now reining in, shots to the back, pulling Akira Tai back in the middle of the ring, hooking the out, trying to get that half Nelson suplex, can't get it off, elbows to the side of the head, charging forward, kick to the midsection. Now Kobashi, going to attempt another powerbomb here perhaps. But once again, Tai with another back body drop again. Kobashi straight back up, oh and eats a big boot, discus elbow missing. Now into a scoop and a slam, no, going to send him into the ropes, neck first. Dropping onto there now, another all chop here from Kobashi. Kobashi firing up DDT again. But don't way back up. Fighting back. Chop to the side of the head. German suplex from Kobashi. Dropping Akira Tawe to the ground. Tawe back up to his feet. Running big boot. Kobashi falls. And both men are down. And this crowd applauding, showing their appreciation for both of these competitors. Both men still down here. Maybe you're going to try and utilize this moment to catch their breath, reconvene. But they're both up now. And there's a side kick from Kobashi to the chest. Running forward now. Eats a big boot again. Running forward into a nice sleeper hold there. Similar to Roddy Piper with that sleeper hold now. Kobashi got it locked in and Tawe. Oh, a stunner! By God! Stunner! Kobashi gonna pull Tawe back up to his feet once more. Ooh, what's he got here? Nice reverse DDT. Hold on! Oh! Scorpion Death Drop! To Stinger! And a kick out from Tawe. Kenta Kabashi with that reverse DDT. Also known as a Scorpion Death Drop. Sting's finisher move, and now going to go for a... Holy hell, the power bomb just hoisting up with absolutely no issue. Making it look easy, and there's a kick out from Tawe. That's the thing with Kobashi. He just makes the, easy, the hardest things look easy. Nice scoop slam. Oh, he's gonna go for the moonsault, and you can see the crowd know it. And oh, there's a Enzo Giri to the back of the head. And Kamashi swamping off the top rope. That was beautiful, that kick to the back of the head. 
Kabashi unmoving now. And Tarway going to try and get up. Trying to capitalize on this small break he's got here. But he needs to move fast because Kabashi's rising to his feet too. Oh, did he just twist his nipples? Did he get hold of the nipples? Oh, oh, double underhook. He's got both arms hooked here. Oh, this is brutal. See, there's, the arms of Tawe are now pushing up the, the top part of the arm, the bicep of Kobashi, while the um the body of Tawe sort of puts pressure on the forearms. And oh, God! Beautiful double underhook suplex. And what that happens with that is because those arms are trapped, the the torque, the sort of way Kabashi rotates, puts all that pressure on those elbows. You see here, it's, it's a lot of pressure on the elbows. Primarily, with the way he's pulling. And then when you do a suplex, basically the forearms stay where they are, and the rest of the body rotates along the axis of those elbows, Puts a lot of weight on that elbow joint. There's not what you want at all. <laughs> Trying to get out of this German suplex with the elbows, but Tawe still got the grip, and there he goes! Beautiful German suplex. Good lord. Running big boot and Kobashi just falls like a tree that's been cut in half, and that's gonna do it. Who? No, oh, Kobashi kicks out. I don't know if he was still conscious. That boot took him out, out like a light, like a redwood tree. The body just fell to the ground, but Tawe. Didn't get the win from it. Now going back to the ring apron. I don't know what is going through Tawe's mind here. Quite frankly, I don't want to know. A choke slam, perhaps. A choke slam from here could could really hurt Kobashi. Now that oh, he's going for that underhook back to the elbow, working it over. And you can imagine also that the knee joint, it's still taped up, you can see, from Kobashi. So he's got that to worry about. And the fans are screaming in terror every time uh, Tawe's hand goes around the neck of Kobashi. Because they know how dangerous that choke slam is. Especially from the ring apron. Oh, and a big slap! Oh my god. Akira Tawe! Choke slam! Off the ring apron to the outside! Straight to that concrete floor! Kobashi! I mean, the choke slam is a devastating maneuver. It's one of Tawe's signature moves. And from there, my god, all Tawe needs to do is roll him back in the ring and hook the leg, get the pin, and it's over. There's no way Kabaji's coming back from that. Look, he's, his body's not even moving. But to win this match, you need to get your opponent in the ring, and you need to pin him. That is how Tawe's going to win. And now he needs to do is roll Kabashi over, shoulders to the mat, and get the three count. Two, three, no! Oh! Kobashi again kicks out. I don't know how he did that. That's that fighting spirit. That's that burning spirit of Kensuke Kobashi. No matter what you throw at him, he keeps fighting. Even Tawe looks confused here. And the fans are shouting for Kobashi here in the Nippon Budokan. They're going wild for Kobashi. Trying to get around the neck for another choke slam here. And another choke slam would probably do it. He was lucky to still be standing after that. I think that brief break when Tawe rolled him back into the ring to the pin may have given Kobashi just enough time to sort of come back to life. If choke slam in the center of the ring, it's over. Oh my god, off the top rope? No. Slaps from Kobashi. See the sweat fly off of Tawe. Both these men are giving it their all. Sunset flip. No. Tawe with a nice punch. And the sweat flying off their bodies as both men are just exhausted from this. And here we go. Shh. 
Choke Slam from Kakira Toe. Two, three, no! <laughs> Chokebashi again kicks out. Kobashi throws the shoulder up again. How? How on earth is he finding this strength to keep fighting? Oh god, that leg to the back of the head like a guillotine. And now, Akira Tawa is looking around like, what, what more can I do? I've choke slammed the man twice. I just... A power bomb, perhaps. To finish off, Kensuko Bashi sit out power bomb. Two, three. No, oh, what? Kobashi. Again. Again, Kobashi kicks out. 2.9999. It doesn't get closer than that. How the hell is Kobashi still in this? Oh, Larry Arto! Larry in there from Kobashi! Out of nowhere! The deadly lariat of Kenta Kobashi. That may be enough to turn the tides here. He was running for that big boot. The Kabashi collected it with that burning lariat, and that may be enough to get the momentum back his way, but he needs to get up. But as you can see, Tarway's getting up too. Kabashi's taking too much punishment to really have the advantage now. Oh, there's those slaps. And another lariat misses. Catching the arm. Trying to go for a key lock here. No. Choke slam. Oh, he trips him. Nice STO. Showing some judo skills there. Akira Tawe now. Stalking his prey. What next? Big boot! Dropping Kabashi once more. And charging for goes Tawe. Oh! Crashing into the corner! Kabashi with the wheel, all the way the way. Now hooking the arms. Butterfly suplex! So we're here right in the middle of the ring. Missing that big boot may be costly. Crashing into the corner. Kabashi to his feet. What's he got planned? And for that scoop slam, but no chops. Oh, those sumo pushes. Ducking goes Kobashi. Chops to the back of the head. Big boot. Kobashi gonna charge it. Oh no, another big boot. Another burning lariat. Oh, from Kobashi. The burning lariat again. Crawling across over the body of Tarway. One, two, th no! Kaira Tarway kicks out again. Now it's Kobashi who's in control. Going for a scoop and a slam. He's gonna go for the move, so in the crowd. They know it. They want to see it. They're firmly behind Kobashi to the top, flying through the air as graceful as ever. One, two, Oh god! No! Tawe kicks out! The moonsault wasn't enough! Slap to the chest! Look at these! Chops! Punches! Anything! Chops to the head! Spinning chop! A lariat again! Another burning lariat! And now he hooks the leg! One! Two! Three! Kobashi retains the Triple Crown Championship in dramatic fashion. 25-39. Kenta Kobashi is still the AJPW Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. What a contest. What an absolute war from both of these men. Putting everything on the line. Kobashi took so much punishment and kept fighting. Kept fighting. And in the end it paid off as he is now victorious.
What an absolute war between those two men. Giving it their all. Once again, Kobashi coming out victorious over Akira Tawe. That's his second defense here in this title reign. First being against Junakiyama. May see some familiar faces among those young lions there. There is the trophy that the Triple Crown Champion has. Tawei getting out of here. What an incredible match. Kenta Kibashi definitely proving why he is a champion, why he is one of the best in the world. Raising the hand of the winner in triumph. The sweat just dripping from Kabashi. New Triple Grand Champion, Kenta Kabashi. Well, not new, but still. There you have it, folks. Again, I'm sorry I can't translate a lot of what was said. Um, aside from Kabashi saying that he gave it his he gave his best and gave his best for everyone, and I'm pretty sure the interviewer said that was a beautiful lariat at the start there. Kirei Lariato. Uh, he defeated Akira Tsawa here. And he thanked the crowd for their support, which is something you can always count on, the crowd being behind Kenta Kabashi. There's no one more lovable than him. He's still walking, walking with a bit of a limp here. That knee still seems to be giving him trouble. It's been giving him trouble the last few matches we've seen here. But, he's champion. And next time, you may be able to see there, um, that name to the left is Misawa Mitsuharu. So the next match we'll be watching is going to be Kento Kabashi versus Mitsuharu Misawa, the Triple Crown title. See you then.